And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, the first thing we need to say about this game is there's no R in it. Now I know that this game is supposed to be very serious, but every time I see it I think Dorkmas. But that is actually not the name. This is a name in which you are... I mean, it's a beautiful picture here on the cover and where you're building all these different areas here. But what this game is really about is about, it's just an abstract strategy game. You are kind of forming pieces. You have these little triangle camp pieces that you're going to be placing all around the board on different spots. But these boards can rotate, they can slide, they can move. It's a three-dimensional, 360 degree, not really, but it feels like that almost to some degree world, and you are trying to score points. Um, well, let me show you. So in the middle of the table, you're going to put these boards here. They're actually double-sided boards, so there's really a whole lot of different kinds of boards you can put. You're going to put them in this arrangement with a hole in the middle. And each player is going to put one of their camp pieces on the outside of one of the boards, uh, on either a, um, a plain space or a forest space. Then, one person is given this token here, the talisman. And that person is going to get these cards. And they're going to look through these cards and they're going to pick one of them. One, two, three, four, or five. Then they'll pass the next to the next person and so on and so forth. Each person is going to look at these and take one and pass it on. Once everyone's taken one, you're going to say, okay, number one, you go first. And so number one will flip theirs over. Number one gets the talisman, which means they'll pick first next time. They take their turn. Then number two, three, four, and five will go. Number two has the opportunity to sometime during their turn to move one of the boards into the empty space. So they don't rotate or anything, they just move into an empty space. There's always four pieces next to any empty space. So into this one I can move this board here, I can slide this board here, I can move this board, or I can move this one uh, wrap around like this. It just will move in like that. So there's always one empty space and four boards that can move into it. Whoever has number three can take one of their camps on the board and move it one space. Whoever is number uh, four can rotate one of the boards 90 degrees in either direction. And then whoever has uh, number five can do any of those things. They can move, they can rotate, or they can move a piece. Now, on a player's turn, besides that action if they have any, they're going to place three of these tents on the board. Now when you place tents on the board, you're going to place them normally next to where one of your other pieces is. So I could place one here. I could place one in trees, but if I place one in trees, I have to sacrifice a piece and one of my three pieces that I have that turn. Once you're in trees, you can place next to trees and you're fine. If there's temples here, there's red temples and yellow temples, when you're next to a temple, you're, able, you, you're not allowed to place on a temple, but you can go through a temple to another spot. So even if temples are next to each other, which would happen basically from the board rotating and such, you'll be able to go through maybe multiple temples. Now you'll have different places. At first you, you might have a piece in one spot, but let's say I put a piece here, and then I put a piece here, and then this board got rotated. You can see that my places that I can put pieces is now going to expand into different places. You can never go onto a mountain. You can go on a volcano, but after the turn is over, any piece in a volcano is gone. So you would simply go on a volcano just to get somewhere else. You can also go through water. I can go, go all the way up to here but you have to sacrifice one of your pieces to do so. And that's pretty much the whole game. The only other rule is when you land on one of these ancient places here, when you land on one of those, you can take one of the actions immediately that's on the cards, where you can rotate a board, slide a board, or move one of your pieces one space. Now, at the end of the game, the game is gonna be eight turns, so you have 24 pieces that you'll put out. We're gonna look over here and we're gonna score pieces. Uh, whoever has the most sacrifice pieces is going to get some bonus points depending on how many players are in the game and whoever has the most, like for example in a four player game, whoever sacrificed the most points is going to get five points. Players are also going to get points for being next to temples. If you're next to one of these yellow temples, you get three points. If you're next to um, the small red temples, those are worth two points. If you're next to a temple, 
every temple on a square. So like for example, there's four temples here, and on next to all four of those temples, then you're going to get a bonus of eight points. And then you're going to look at all the tiles in the game, and there's eight tiles, and you're going to get points based on how many, on how many of those tiles you are next to at least one temple. And that number is here. So you can see that if you're on seven tiles next to a temple, you get 22 points. And each of the ruins, the ones that let you rotate and stuff, those are also worth one point. Whoever has the most points is the winner. Well, okay. That's a pretty fun game. It really is. And let me tell you why I like it so much. Apparently, because I can't hold a piece in my hand. But anyway, I like this game because the theme here is negligible. I mean, we're not going to really be, oh, I'm building heads. Okay, whatever. Take that out of it. It's just an abstract strategy game. But it works really well. Now, you play with a slightly smaller board if you're playing with two players. But I really like the concept of sliding boards around rotating them. Because you can do some really interesting moves. If I rotate a board and then put a piece on that board, then put my next piece in a spot that lets me slide a board, then I can put my third piece on another board. That's a really neat idea. I like the taking the cards aspect. I sit there and go, do I want to go first? Because going first can be a big deal because someone else might be trying to block you off. They might try to surround all the temples, uh, all the sides of a temple on one island, just to stop you from getting the island bonus on that island, or maybe just to stop you from getting to any island. They can cut you off. So going first is a big deal, not to mention going first, which you pick first next time. However, I might really want to slide a tile or rotate a tile or move a piece. And the different kinds of terrain are pretty easy. I mean, basically, green is good. Then after that, forest and volcanoes and water all kill a piece. So you're, you're careful not to put too many in those. But at the same time, nothing wrong with killing a few pieces that you might not need because at the end of the game, you're going to get points for having the most sacrificed pieces. It's not that impressive looking of a game, okay? Let's be honest. So you look at it and you're like, eh, it looks okay, all right? But it really reminds me a little bit of Through the Desert, which is, an, granted, a much cooler-looking game from Rhino Canizia, where you're, you're putting strings of camels around. This has a different feel, but you're growing like this, this line of things. But interestingly enough, by this game, that line's going to jump, and as you rotate and move, like, I personally like to try to go and get a guy on all eights on eight boards, which is not that hard, but it's also not that easy either. you got to try to figure out how to do it. But so you could try to concentrate and get all the temples on one board, then all the temples on the next board, and that can get you a lot of points too. And you're also watching what the other players do. Sometimes you like have lines that are racing, almost like a slow version of Tron. I was very impressed with this. It, it's it's a it's a it's a lot of fun. Uh, it makes you think the whole time. It's not that difficult. You got th you know you have, you have two decisions on your turn: which card you're going to take. And then when you take that card, how are you going to put out your three pieces? It's only three pieces, so the game kind of moves like that, but, but it gives you enough options and different ways to use those pieces where it's simple, but there's some good ideas behind it. I like it. No R needed here. Docmas. Thanks, Tower Judgment. Approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.